Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So I'm very excited about today's video because I'm finally going to be testing some new and hyped up fragrances. You know, this is one of my favorite types of videos to film and I haven't done it in quite some time. And the reason for that is because, you know, when I was away from YouTube sort of in the summer and fall and when I was on my no buy slash low buy, I didn't just not buy new fragrances, but I also didn't really test any new fragrances. So that's why I didn't really make any videos like this, but I am back into testing now and I've got a lot of samples and decants of new and hyped up fragrances. And I want to share with you my opinion about these fragrances. Now, I have so many that I think I'm going to split it into two parts. So. I'm filming the first one today, and then right after that, I'm gonna film the second part, which will come out in a week or two. So if you've been curious about many of the new releases, stay tuned. I think I'm going to talk about many of them. And let's start with two newest releases from BDK Parfums. That is, first of all, Passessoir X-Tray. That's the one I'm gonna start with. Now, some of you might remember that I do have the original Passessoir and I am a big, big fan. So I was very curious about the X-Tray version. So let me quickly read you the notes and then I will tell you what I think about it. So the notes are ginger, pear, mandarin orange, black pepper, cacao, quince, jasmine, peach, orange blossom, cashmere, ambroxan, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin. So a lot of notes. What does it smell like? Well, I have to tell you that to me, it smells very, very similar to the original Passessoir. There is a little something that's a little bit strong in the opening, stronger than in the original, and that almost feels like, I don't know if there is perhaps a little bit of brown sugar or a little bit of chocolate or a little bit, oh, there's cacao. Did I say there's cacao pod? Maybe that's what it is. Something like that, but it's only there in the opening. Like it doesn't last long for me at all. And then when it opens up, it really smells like the original Passessoir. Like you have that really, really juicy quince with some other uh, like citruses added in, maybe a bit of floral nuances, but I don't really get a lot of that. You know, it's really sweet and juicy. So I don't find a lot of differences between the two, the original and the X-Tray. So if you already have one, I don't think you need the other. So for me, I have the original. I'm happy with the original. I'm not going to get the full bottle of the X-Tray. But if, let's say you didn't have either one and you were deciding which one to get, I would say go for the X-Tray because it is just stronger. You know, many people complain about the performance of BDK fragrances. Surprisingly for me, they're pretty good, you know, and I often struggle with performances and fragrances. But BDK fragrances are pretty good on me. So the original Passessoir performs well. So, um, but for many people, I know it's a problem. And if you really prefer punchier, stronger types of scents, go for the X-Tray. If you prefer something a little bit lighter, go for the original. But they're both beautiful and they're both quite similar. Second new release from BDK is Vanille Leather. This one I think came out before the Passessoir X-Tray, but this is my first time trying it. Now, vanilla fragrance, you know, I'm here for this. Love vanilla, but there is a leather in the title, so I wasn't going to blind buy this one. I knew that I had to sample it first. So again, let's start with the notes. So we have here violet, pink pepper, jasmine, tuberose, orange blossom, vanilla, orris, benzoin, leather, oak, and patchouli. 
I mean, interesting notes. Uh, I don't know if looking at the notes, I would think of this as a vanilla fragrance. And when I smell it, to me, this is not a vanilla centric scent. I mean, vanilla is here. It does have some vanilla, but it's not the main player in this fragrance. For me, main players are violet and iris or auris. Okay. The same thing to me, you know, fragrance is very powdery. In fact, violet is so strong that I don't get any other florals. Like there is what? Tuberose, jasmine, orange blossom. I don't get any of these. To me, this is very much a fragrance centered around purple flowers, violet and iris or auris. Leather, well, Maybe there is a little bit of leather here mixed with patchouli. There's definitely a bit of a base here that's kind of somewhat earthy. Neither one is very strong, but it is there. Just like vanilla is not very strong, but it is there. And that's mostly what I get. Powdery, floral, slightly earthy, not very sweet vanilla. Yeah, that's what this smells like. Now, is this for me? No, it's not for me. I don't like very powdery scents. You know, this is heavily floral, not my cup of tea either. Is it a bad scent? No, absolutely not. It's not a bad scent. It's just not for me. For those that enjoy purple flowers, give this one a try. Okay, next, let's talk about a very hyped up fragrance on YouTube. That is Sugar Leather from Un Nui Nomad. People have raved about it nonstop. And I will be honest with you, you know, not don't mean any disrespect to any of the reviewers, but I think majority of the people received this fragrance in PR and you know, reviews based on PR fragrances, I always take with a grain of salt. I'm a little bit skeptical. And I will admit to you honestly that I was skeptical about this fragrance. I always wondered, is it really that good or is it that good because it was sent in the PR? I mean, you never know these days, really. So I had to try it for myself. So let's start with the notes and there are not a lot here. Caramel, cinnamon, leather, labdanum, amorous. Looks uncomplicated, looks interesting, although, you know, leather scares me as always. And let me tell you right away, the hype is real here. It really is. This fragrance is gorgeous. This is my kind of fragrance. It is strong, but not overpowering. This is definitely sweet and spicy with a bit of an edge, a bit of a backbone. So originally when I spray it, I don't really get leather at all. When it dries down, there is a bit of leather that comes out, but again, it's the beautiful kind of refined, smooth leather that doesn't ruin the fragrance, but does this just the opposite, it strengthens it. So, yeah, I almost get, you know, I am surprised when I looked at the notes, I actually just ordered a sample without looking at the notes just because there was so much hype about it. And when I got it and smelled it, this is when I actually looked at the notes and I was surprised that there are no, no fruity notes in here because for me, especially in the opening, I almost feel like there's some dried fruits in here, like maybe prunes or dried apricots. Or when my husband smelled, he said, is there a cherry in here? So I don't get cherry. I get more towards like plum or prune or something like that. But we both felt like there were some kind of fruits in here and maybe it's the cinnamon that gives that vibe. I'm not sure, but that's what I get from it. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous scent. The hype about this one is completely real. I do want to get a full bottle of this eventually. Loved it. Now let's talk about a gourmand that has been getting a lot of hype lately. It's a very new release, I think. I mean, maybe by the time this video comes out, it won't be so new, but it's still, it's, it's pretty new. And that is Le Gourmand from Jusette Parfums. 
I mean, I had to try this one, right? This is supposed to be the most gourmand fragrance out there. I was so, so curious. So again, let's look at the notes. We have butter, toast, salt, cookie dough, hazelnut, cocoa spread, hazelnut. I mean, <laughs> could they put any more gourmand notes in here? I don't think it's possible. This is just gourmand through and through. So what does it smell like? Let me start with this. This is super strong. I mean, really, really strong. Like when I bring it to my nose, it's like, whoa, I want to step back. It like hits me in the nose. It's very strong and it's extremely gourmand. This really is probably one of the most gourmand fragrances I have ever tried. Like it's very gourmand, very literal. What does it smell like? Well, when I smell it, it smells like um, Nutella, <laughs> like Nutella spread. I gave this to my daughter to smell and she said, oh, this is hot chocolate. This smells like hot chocolate. I have a candle that smells like this. And really, the truth is somewhere in the middle. It smells like a mix of hot chocolate and Nutella spread. That is it. That's what I'm getting from this fragrance. Is it yummy and delicious smelling it from, from the blotter? It is, absolutely. Do I want to wear this? I don't. I really find this one too literal, too strong. Like, I don't want to smell like Nutella. It's just, it's too strong. If it was maybe Nutella that's not so in your face and if it had some other nuances with it, I think I, I would have liked it. But this is just too strong. Yeah, too literal. So some people will love it who are not afraid of, uh, you know, really punchy, really literal gourmands. For me, it's a little bit too much. And so, no, I don't want a full bottle of this one. Next, let's go to Creed's new release, and that is Carmina. I sampled this one multiple times, really multiple times. Uh, the first time I sampled it was in a store. And when I first sprayed it, I thought, wow, this is something special. And then I, you know, that kind of wasn't enough for me. I got a decant and I got to sample it a little bit more. So before I tell you what it smells like and what I think about it, let's quickly, again, look at the notes. We have black cherry, saffron, pink pepper, rose, peony, violet, cashmere wood, Ambroxan, musk, myrrh, uh, frankincense. I think I said it incorrectly, but you know, you get me. So when I first sprayed the opening, the first like maybe, I don't know, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, the opening is beautiful, really. I get something sweet and a little bit fruity and kind of, I don't know, a little bit warm and sexy and I really really like it but that lasts I don't know five minutes and then the fragrance starts changing and unfortunately the change doesn't work for me because what I get is some kind of expensive face cream like Lancome face cream you know I get something similar to this from uh, possibilities from La Perla I don't know what note or combination of notes uh, create that for me but this is what I get See, now it's been sitting uh, a bit on this blotter and I get cream, like Lancome, Estee Lauder cream. I don't know, some kind of expensive face cream. That's what it smells like. And that's not for me. I don't like fragrances that smell like this. So yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, as beautiful as the opening is, then it goes downhill for me. But again, this is my taste. Please take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, we all have different tastes and different noses. I know many people really love this scent. For me, unfortunately, it didn't work. And I left a very interesting and new to me house till the end. I have three fragrances from this house that I've been very curious about. The house I'm talking about is Lorenzo Pazalia. And the first one that I'm going to test here with you is his latest release. Again, a lot of talk is happening about this fragrance. I know it was, I think, 
uh, presented at Scent Explore and, you know, a lot of people got to test it. So there is a bit of a buzz happening about this fragrance and I had to test it. Uh, this is a gourmand. It's called Sugar Kisses. Beautiful name. So I was so, so curious. Now let's look at the notes and the pyramid here is huge. So many notes and again, so many gourmand notes in this one. So we have cacao butter, milk, heliotrope, frangipani, orange peel, coconut, chocolate, vanilla, dates, tonka, hazelnut, cacao blossom, caramel, toffee, brown sugar, vanilla bean, white musk, benzoin, rum. Wow. I mean, wow. So many amazing notes. What do I think about this fragrance? I will tell you honestly that based on the notes, I think I expected something a little bit different than what I get in this fragrance. I expected something super strong and super gourmand. And it's not, in my opinion. At first, I really wasn't sure what I was smelling. I almost, <laughs> I almost wanted to say, this has milk. I definitely get milk, but it kind of sort of makes me think of rotten milk, but not exactly that. And then I figured it out. This smells like Bailey's. This really smells like Bailey's. That's what I get. It's like I do get a bit of alcohol. It's definitely electronic. There is a lot of sweetness in here, but it's really interesting type of sweetness because it has a sugary element. So I definitely see the title of this having sugar in it, but it's not just sugar. It's not just caramel. It's not just cacao butter or whatever is in here. It's really some kind of new and different sweet smell based on probably combination of, of all of these gourmand notes. So what I get more than anything is Bailey's uh, with maybe some additional sugar added in. I don't know, because there's definitely a sugary nuance in here. The fragrance is definitely not as dense, not as strong, not as punchy, and not as gourmand as I expected it to be. Like, despite the fact that there are so many gourmand notes, somehow it didn't cross that line of being, let's say, too literal or too sweet or like too sakingly sweet. No, it's really well balanced and it's not overwhelming and overpowering. And the more I smell this, the more I love it. This is a really interesting scent. It's sort of recognizable in a way, but in another way, it's really not. And I feel like despite me having so many gourmands and vanillas, you know, this one will stand apart. It's different. There's something very different and unique about this scent. So putting it all together, yes, I love it. Yes, I think it's great. Yes, I want to have a full bottle of this one. Next fragrance from the same house that came out earlier this year and that I've been very, very curious about ever since it came out is Summer Hammer. This is a mango-centric scent. I love mango. I almost blind bought it a few times this summer, but I didn't. And so I finally get a chance to test it. So the notes in here are mango, pineapple, coconut, rum, bergamot, white florals, uh, marine notes, musk, sandalwood, amber, and vetiver. And I think my opinion about this fragrance is going to be very similar to what I've heard others say about this fragrance as well. It is also not what I imagined. I mean, I do get mango for sure. I don't get a ton of sweetness. Like there is this fruity sweetness from mango, but there is no additional sweetness from anything else. Uh, it's quite fresh. I do get, you know, there are marine notes and I do get that. It's like I get some kind of vibe of a sea breeze or something like that. So I do understand those notes in here. And 
yeah, I think that's about it. Like it's fruity, fresh. It sort of has these tropical fruits, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that I would truly call this a tropical scent. Like it's more fruity than tropical. And in my opinion, it it's perhaps leans out just a touch more uh, to the masculine side, I think, just based on my taste. Uh, just because, you know, when I talk about mango scents, I enjoy something juicier, sweeter, punchier, fruitier, I don't know, something like that. And so this one is not exactly the type of scent that I would want in my collection. This is not a bad scent by any means. This is quite pleasant, but again, this is not something that I need or want in my collection. So for me, this is a no, but it's a really nice scent. And that brings us to the last fragrance, still from the same house. That is, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but let's say vanille pie rum. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this is a vanilla fragrance. Uh, when I look at the notes, it's crazy <laughs> vanilla overload. Like I'm going to read you all the vanillas that are in here. It's a little bit crazy. Bourbon vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, Tahitian vanilla, regular vanilla, rum, tonka bean. That's just in the top notes. Then in mid notes, we again have vanilla, caramel, patchouli, white florals. And in the base, we have black vanilla husk, rum, patchouli, and oud. I mean, yeah, can you have any more vanilla? And what I will tell you is that absolutely every fragrance, and I've only tested three from this house, surprised me because it's not what I expected. Based on so many different vanillas, like I was expecting this vanilla overload, like vanilla everywhere. And this scent, out of the three, I would say is the quietest. It's really the lightest and the quietest. And it smells like vanilla <laughs> uh like vanilla ice cream probably i don't think i get much more than that out of this scent like it's a pretty simple straightforward vanilla vanilla ice cream it's light you know maybe it needs to stand and mature to to get a little bit stronger like this is what happened with vanille chanel which is a similar type of scent that i have you know after a few months it became much stronger so perhaps th this uh, vanilla needs that as well i don't know but i'm you know giving you my opinion uh based on having it just for a li little while it's very light and it's pleasant but it's very uneventful it's just like many, 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 many other vanilla fragrances that we have and we have tested. So, you know, pleasant, but um, nothing to write home about, nothing interesting, nothing unique, uh, nothing that I want to have in my collection, you know? Um, so yeah, nice, but I don't need it. So I think this is where I'm going to end it for part one of testing these fragrances. Uh, I'm going to film right after this. I'm going to film part two because I have quite a few more that I want to share with you. But for now, please let me know, have you tried any of these fragrances? And if you have, what are your opinions about them? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up, to subscribe and to comment. And I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.